So this video was highly requested. This is my studio tour 2022. So this is obviously before, and this is after. I wanna do a full breakdown for you guys, just for you. Let's get into it. Ah, what a month. What a month it has been. Crazy busy month, cameras dropping, lenses dropping, everything seems to be dropping. Obviously Q4 is one of the biggest months, uh, biggest months obviously of the year because it's leading up to Christmas and man, I hope you guys are well. I'm well, I'm having fun, it's <laughs> always having fun. But today this is a video you guys have been waiting for for a long time, very, very, very highly requested, especially on my Instagram with my backdrop, you know, the shelving system, the compartments and my desk and my podcast and a whole bunch of everything. We're gonna be breaking down my whole studio and the reason why it hasn't come is because A, had a lot of jobs coming up, B, it's crazy busy season and uh, C, the studio is always changing. I've been waiting for bits and pieces to come just so I can make it as best as possible, but I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> it's always going to change. Obviously the studio, the podcast is the newest thing that's dropped in the studio. So I've had to make room for a little bit of the podcast set up, you know, three people sitting here. But also I just wanna break down my top down rig. I wanna break down my actual editing space uh, where I store my lenses, store all my gear, uh, my lens chart stuff. And obviously I very highly requested my backdrop shelving system. I need to break this all down because it's not as simple as just putting links in the description and you go check it out. It's, you know, some of this is custom built and some of this uh, is only Australia. So I will try and find something that's very similar to your country, but to at least give you some recommendations on where you could actually find some of this stuff. But yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Also, this is brought to you by Squarespace. So Squarespace obviously is an all online platform where you can build a website, domains, you can have an online shop, all those kind of things, we're gonna be getting into the specifics of Squarespace. So thank you for Squarespace for bringing this video to all you guys. But uh, yeah, let's get into the video. So this is my computer setup. Now we're gonna be going through pretty much what I have here and what the use cases of a lot of these things are. And this is, you know, really good and optimized for my workflow. And then we can get into my back shelf, which I know a lot of you guys are pretty keen to see podcasting studio parts where I store my stuff, where I store my lenses, but uh, let's talk about this desk. Okay, so we're on the floor here because you can see here the L brackets. These are pretty much four legs and I built this desk. So this is from the local hardware store. It's literally just one long plank of wood and uh, essentially just put four legs on it. And uh, the reason why I actually utilized something like this and built my own because I could have the longest desk I wanted to suit the particular studio that I was in and it just works out well and looks nice too. Now what's this thing? Essentially, I literally built this from the hardware store once again, little a plank of wood, four legs, and I've got a little drawer underneath there. The drawer actually has pen and paper, and I've got pretty much my main remote for the key light, which I use in pretty much all my videos. Aircon remote, SD cards, type A cards, and yeah, like I said, pen and paper. So this is where I do all my notes and uh, pretty much my to-do list. And then just a whole bunch of, you know, decorations to make it look a little bit better. But I've got my Peter McKinnon tool here, which I use pretty much all the time. And my unboxing knife. You always got to have an unboxing knife. And, oh, yeah, this one. In case I want to utilize my phone, it has better audio into it. So this is the Holy Land, I don't even know what you call it, Lark C1. That's that. And I've just got a whole bunch of things to make it look nice at the top there. I've got the Batman car, I've got my business cards, I've got this little square cube thing that I got for Father's Day, which is cool, of my daughter. And I've also got a clock, but uh, let's talk about the reasons why I've got a laptop on this side and a third screen on this side. Well, this is the ViewSonic TD6. 1655, I cannot even remember, but uh, essentially I can demount this and bring it with me traveling and I can actually hook it up to my laptop because it does have a micro, so it's got a mini HDMI or it's got USB-C, which I can put 
directly into my M1 laptop, USB-C to USB-C, and I can have a second screen while I travel. So this literally just pulls out and I could take it traveling. But the third screen is there for email. So if I need to keep an email opened up with a whole bunch of editing things that I need to do, I only have to refer to that screen. It just makes it so much easier when you've got two screens here for Premiere Pro. we have got one of the display screen, one of the editing screen. And like I said, this third screen has the emails, but I can also put music on this one as well and just toggle through that and keep obviously the other two open, just increases my workflow. And then laptop, is the interesting one. The reason why I've got a laptop here is in case I need to actually, this this is, is in case I need to work on a second project at the same time as I'm working on my main project. Now, sometimes I do a little bit of podcast editing on the laptop, and then if I need to go take it into the bedroom or need to go have lunch, I can take the laptop with me and still continue to do my editing while I leave my main projects on the computer here. It's a little bit, you know, interesting because I'm trying to maximize the amount of time I've got in the day as well. So that's why I've got this laptop. Plus, laptop is really good for traveling. The M1 Max are just incredible when it comes to editing. And what is that light there? Now, that light has a lot to do with my top-down shots. If you've seen my Instagram or if you've seen my YouTube, you can see my top-down shots. That is the Nanlite 60B. Now that is there with a gobo and projector set to give it a nice shutter effect and make my top down shots look really nice. But uh, let's have a look at that thing. So this, uh, this light literally stays up here the whole time. This is actually from my local hardware store, which I've put in between the two walls and it stays there the whole time, unless I really, really need this for a shoot. It stays there because I do so many top down shots. So it's always good to have there. But let's go back to the desk because there's one major thing that you guys need to see. Now, before we continue into this desk setup, this is pretty much my audio that we've got right here. This is a Cinco Mic D1. Now, before I show you how I've actually set this up, we're gonna be talking about Squarespace. And uh, obviously, thank you to Squarespace for bringing this video to you guys. And it is an all-in-one website design platform for your professional content. You're able to sell your LUTs on an online store, which, you know, I do have the LUTs. A link will be in the description below if you do wanna check out that as well, but you know, display all your professional stuff. And the great thing about this website is that you can obviously have photos, you can have a link to my podcast, which I actually have the link to my podcast. You can also have your own domain name because there's nothing better than having like www.jackedvisions.com.au and having that domain name can actually make it look more professional. And you can also get a nice email, which I've got, hey, at jackvisions.com.au because there's nothing worse than sending an email to a client and trying to be professional. It says uh, LFC rules at hotmail.com. Like, come on, it doesn't sound as professional as, you know, your website last name. So definitely check out Squarespace. Use my link in the description below, Squarespace forward slash Jason Morris. You get 10% off. And uh, obviously that's going to help you guys out and that's gonna help me out. And I'm just really excited that uh, I've always used Squarespace and I'm so thankful that they actually helped to produce this video to give to you guys. And this is how you're actually seeing all this. So Squarespace has made this possible. So link will be in the description below. So make sure you check that out. But this is pretty much my audio setup right now. So we've got the Cinco Mic D1, which is pointed directly at my speech bubble area. So I usually have this out of the frame, but you can, you know, there it is, you can actually see it in frame. And I have it obviously just slightly out of frame with a C stand. So this is boomed directly over the top and I can just swivel it around the room depending on where I am or I use my ECM B1M, which is the hot shoe multi interface on the Sony cameras. And let's talk about this one major thing that I absolutely love and is really pivotal to how I am so productive. <sighs> Now this one is the most important part because you gotta have a fridge. Gotta store my sodas in there because uh, you, know, you gotta be refueled when you're editing. And you gotta have some there. But obviously, obviously I've got waters there, but uh, really should stop having sodas because my dentist said Sodas aren't really good for your teeth because they chew away on the enamel. Probably should listen to my dentist, but <laughs> what else have we got up here? Well, let's, let's go somewhere else here. 
Okay, now before we get into my lenses storage and before we get into the speakers, I want to talk about this thing. Now, this thing is massive when it comes to my studio, and it's the main reason why I actually have my key light here, and that is Folcam. Folcam or Yulanzi actually sent this floor to ceiling uh, support beam. Now, that's actually holding up my light. This is my key light that's responsible for lighting me up in every single one of my videos, and this is responsible for mounting my camera in every single one of my talking head videos because this is actually mounted to this pole here which has this you know arm thing with a tripod head it is such a good setup and the great thing about this full cam tripod head is that it can actually take my f38 uh mounts and not just f38 but it's the f22 mounts as well and i've just got a whole bunch of these long arm things that makes it a little bit longer and i can adjust it to whatever length i want and i've got one of these things monitor mount that's attaching that uh viewsonic mount monitor thing that you actually saw before so it is so handy. I actually was using this for my monitor mounts, but my monitors are just slightly too long to have them both there. I would have had to have them on an angle, but I wanted them straight. But that is really good because this gives me so much versatility into where I'm gonna have my camera angles and especially with this light because I can swivel this light around the, check this out, check this out. I can literally swivel the light around just like that it makes it so much easier you can actually have this so i think it's called a gear tree you can actually have a light on there microphone laptop stand you can have your camera on there it's just like an all-in-one youtube studio setup but that's not the way i've sort of got it i've just got it as my light stand and i can actually mount my camera on there which makes it so much easier let's get into these speakers so these speakers are from Edify. I literally just bought them on Amazon and they have a little front casing. I just pulled the front case off and it kind of looks better without the front casing uh, because it's got like a mesh sort of thing over the top. And uh, I've got a couple of uh, speaker stands that are height adjustable and angle adjustable as well to, you know, bring it down to my height so I can put it directly at me and sort of as much in my ears as possible but you know it's audio quality i'm not really you know looking for audio quality I'm just enough to edit some of my youtube videos and basic sound design whereas i can put some headphones if i want to do some serious sound design stuff but uh how i store all my lenses check this one okay so this is very basic this is literally just from ikea it is a glass case that i put all my lenses in uh essentially there is no real system when it comes to this. I just make sure it's in one spot so I know exactly where they are and uh, it looks kind of tidy. But uh, let's get into some more of this stuff. And lastly, just to cap off, I've got my frames up the top. I've got Liverpool in the corner, the rock looking at me right in the center, pointing down and saying, make sure you grind out today. And I've got Back to the Future there. And then just over right next to it, which I'll move that one. You can see there it's the iPhone 3S, the original iPhone, which is awesome. It's sort of pulled apart and you can see all the internals. It looks kind of cool, but uh, let's have a look at a podcast setup anyway. So I'm literally trying to skim through this as fast as I can because I know you guys want to have a look at that whole back, you know, part of my studio, the full setup and I we really need to try and wrap this part up so we can get into the second half of this video. But this is my podcasting setup. It literally it's just a table that I've built, drilled a few holes, put these little things in, and I've got this Rode PSA boom arms, and I've got the Rode pod mic, and I've got the Zoom pod track P4, which runs into a V-mount battery and some cheap Sony headphones, like 20 bucks. Pretty basic, and it's on wheels, so I can literally just push it out of the way and put it into the spot where I'm actually gonna be podcasting. So pretty basic. Let's get into this back part, all right. So 
This is a shelving system. Now, this is pretty much custom built to what I need. Now, you can get this from our local hardware store in Bunnings. It's called Racket. And like I said, this can support up to 1,500 kilos. It's 1.5 ton. That's a lot of weight. But obviously, I don't need that much weight because I've just got some lights on here. I've got a couple of C-stands and uh, tripods and stuff. It's a pretty light system. <laughs> I don't really need that much, but it looks cool. That's a great thing. Now, in terms of this backboard here, the pegboard, the pegboard is actually from my local hardware store as well. It was a white pegboard and I've literally just painted it black just to make it look a little bit better because white is reflective, but it doesn't look as good as well and just suits my theme. So I literally just bought it, cut it to size and uh, it's pretty much just stuck onto the back here. It's very basic, but it does, you know, it fits a purpose. Yeah, these things are literally for display. Some of them I'd use in very, very small circumstances. Some of them I, you know, lend out or rent out, but it's pretty much just for display purposes. It's great background. And uh, some of them I don't need to sell because uh, they're not really worth selling. You get like, what, 50, 60 bucks out of some of them, so. But in terms of the setup, they do have a couple of different sizes in terms of length. Now, I've got this part here, which is the smaller section. So this one is maybe about a meter slash, what is it, three feet long sort of thing. Uh, whereas these ones are roughly five feet long. Uh, so there's a couple of them put together and you can actually utilize a smaller system like a shorter system or you can actually have the ones that go up higher now the reason why I wanted the ones that go higher is that I can put my lights all the way at the top and then in this middle section is where I can actually put my light stands and uh, tripods and all those kind of things in the middle section and then down here is where I have all the space that I can actually work with so down here is literally all my workspace so I can pretty much just build anything on these desks and uh, just gives me extra space because I don't actually have any other tables in here. I've got my podcasting table, which sometimes I bring out and just build out my camera, but here's a good enough space to actually build out my cameras. And uh, yeah, it just obviously looks good. So this was actually from my local hardware store as well. Uh, I literally just cut this to shape and cut this to size. So, you know, I do recommend if you do have a hardware store and they do some, you know, specific cuttings, Measure out, measure twice, cut once. Keep that uh, bit of advice in mind. Measure twice, cut once. Because you don't want to cut it too short and uh, it not fit. Now, this little part is my newest addition. So essentially this is just little bits and pieces that I need to grab in a pinch. NATO rails, uh, obviously little screws and quarter 20 mounts and all those kind of things that I potentially would need in a pinch. Now, essentially, this one is a very similar concept. It's the same brand, I think. Maybe it's from a local hardware store. I'll try and link everything in the description below. But essentially, these ones pull out. And then this is where I put all my mounts. So these are the fold cam mounts. I've got a couple of PGY Tech mounts as well. But generally, the fold cam ones are in there. Screwdrivers and all those kind of little bits. These are my smaller magic arms because I'm constantly changing out my A7 IV rig, uh, my FX6 rig, and uh, soon to be the FX30. So that will be coming into my kit and I'll be, you know, utilizing some of these things, but it just makes it easier when things are literally right there and you can just quickly grab it out. Whereas if I put it directly into the boxes, which we're going to go through in a second, uh, it just becomes a bit more of a process. Let's focus on these things. So these things are essentially, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. You literally chuck it into this pegboard part and then you can hang stuff. Makes it so much easier. I love the setup with this because uh, obviously you can put them in individual slots wherever you want and fully customize your pegboard to whatever configuration you want. And it obviously, everyone's gear is going to change and this is a very very easy way of doing this and absolutely recommend these and I'm pretty sure they're standard with a lot of pegboards and a, uh, a lot of hardware stores so yeah that's a plus okay so this one 
is really interesting. These boxes are super, super cheap and uh, from a local hardware store, once again. You can see this one has filters. So this has pretty much all the filters I need, especially the adapters. These ones are for uh, all my map box systems. So everything in there, and I also have uh, step up rings and all those kind of things specifically in its own box. Now, that is probably one of the biggest things that I recommend is that you try and segregate things so you have a streamlined process and name things with a little naming tag and you can actually know where everything is. Now, I do have one specifically for the A7 IV. So this one has cages, side handles, top handles, V-mount battery rigs and all those kind of things. Unfortunately, for the a7 IV and the FX30. I do actually need to get another one of these and I've got, I think, the top handle of the FX6 as well. And uh, maybe we'll go to the uh, local hardware store and actually show you guys where I actually get these, what the price is. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's do that now. So if you've seen some of my most recent YouTube videos, you'll see this is where my new lens chart is. So essentially I've just left, left this lens chart in the exact same spot so I can pretty much set up each lens test in the same spot and just make it as accurate as possible. And it's generally where I display some of my work as well. You can see I've got my pop vinyls at the top. I've got my bachelor of film uh, degree up the top there, just on display. Obviously you wanna have that. So right below the lens chart system, I have these boxes right here, a little drawers. This is where I have obviously all my V-mount batteries and all my uh, A7 IV batteries, A6000 batteries, NPF batteries, and I've got a few little charging accessories for like uh, the tilter system, nucleus handle, uh, the Zhiyun charging thing, all those kind of things. And on the top, there's always plenty of these. Lens caps, rear caps, camera you know, caps, other lens caps, all those things in there. Always have it all compartmentalized and completely separated so you know exactly where everything is. And uh, obviously this is where I have all, if you can see that, charging bits and pieces. So charging station, not super tidy, not super sexy, but my V-mount battery charger is underneath there, NPF batteries and uh, just the power station. So I've got a couple of you know USB-Cs and micro USBs that I charge random bits and pieces and stuff. Nothing really fancy when it comes to charging. I've just got literally a shelf here where I place a lot of the things where I charge. One big tip that I do when I charge before a major job, where is it? See these? These are my car keys. And what I do when I have stuff charged here, especially audio equipment, all those kind of things, is literally put my keys on top of them. So I never forget anything that I need to charge. And then when I come over here, I actually see everything else that I've pre-charged for obviously the night before for that day. So massive game changer. Put your car keys here or put a sign, put a post-it note on your door before you step out, be like, grab things that you need that you have charged and uh this has saved my life a lot. So absolutely recommend put your car keys so you never forget the stuff that's actually charging. Now these ones have pretty much all the random stuff. There's a couple of Godox SL60 lights in here, which I almost never use and I probably should sell. But uh, there's always room for, you know, having them on set, you never know. <laughs> uh, in here, I've got a couple of just, which is a good question, a couple of straps. Mist fluid, bits and pieces. This one, same again. Bits and pieces for the RS3 and the RS3 Pro. Tripod legs and stuff off gimbals, you know. There's always bits and pieces that come off the gimbals and you don't utilize, but you always have just in case. There's always a spot for something. 
But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And uh, thank you to Squarespace for bringing this video to you guys. Also, thank you to Ulanzi and Fallcam for supplying a couple of the things. And uh, yeah, links will be in the description below for a whole bunch of these other things that will be obviously useful for you guys to build your own studio, your own way to fit your own space. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.